All right, back with another episode in this mini-series. And today, we're looking for the perfect coaster for each park in the Hershend and SeaWorld chains. This is going to be different than the Six Flags and Cedar Fair videos, because these parks seem to have a different focus. They're not shooting for quantity over quality, or they're not entirely focused on rides. So their collections are going to be a lot smaller, but it doesn't make them any less good. These chains are looking into a lot of different factors when adding a new coaster, including cost, space, who they work with, and what the park needs. And I'm throwing out every other factor except for what the park needs, while still keeping it somewhat realistic. And I'm just going to tell you now, spoiler alert, Wild Adventures is not getting a B&M Giga. So here we go. These are the coasters that each park in the Hershen and SeaWorld chains need the most. When we're looking at what a park needs the most, you have to analyze their lineup. A complete park needs airtime, a launch, wood, multi-looper, a standout coaster, coaster not on the track, and they could use something that spins. And in this video, I'll also be looking at the family-friendly options that each park has. There may also be a fringe need that a park could use, but for lineups like these, that probably won't come into play. I also won't be talking about Sesame Place, since that's a kid's park, and it only has two coasters. Speaking of weak parks, Let's talk about the weakest park in the Hershen chain, Dollywood. I joke, of course. Dollywood is alright. They have their standout coaster and lightning rod, which is also their airtime machine and a launch coaster, and was a wooden coaster but really isn't anymore. 57% of its track was converted to steel over the off-season, but they do have a solid wooden coaster and Thunderhead. For inversions, you have Tennessee Tornado and Wild Eagle, which is also your coaster not on the track. Fire Chaser Express also has a launch and serves as a family coaster, along with Blazing Fury, Dragonflyer, and Whistlepunk Chaser. So their one gap is a spinning coaster, which is something in the past that I've overlooked for something better, but I've also used it as an excuse to get a mock extreme spinner into the park. I think at some point, Dollywood will get one of these, just like its sister park at Silver Dollar City. It would be a great fit, but I think this park could benefit even more from a B&M Giga. Yes, we are busting out the B&M Giga right out the gate, and here's why. Dollywood could use some floater airtime, and they could use a big, long, sprawling coaster with lots of speed that rides along that amazing terrain. You could see this rising above the Smoky Mountains as you drive into the park. It would be one of the best coasters in the country, and it would give Lightning Rod that great compliment to make an amazing one-two punch. It would be expensive, but you know what? Dollywood is expensive, and you should get what you pay for. Let's go to Wild Adventures, and this will be pretty easy. Airtime, no. Launch, no. Wood, not anymore. Spinner, no. Standout, no. Family Coaster, most of the park. Multi-Looper, Boomerang. And Twisted Typhoon hangs under the track. So basically, their two extreme coasters are a Boomerang and an SLC. And then there's four mild coasters. Let's just get an RMC Raptor at this park, and then they can build off that. That gets them their standout airtime coaster, and that fills most of the important gaps for me. This park needs a lot if it ever wants to draw people in from around the country. As for Hershen's newest park, Kentucky Kingdom. They don't have a lot, but they do cover a lot of gaps. They have a great top two. I would say Storm Chaser is their standout, but some may prefer Lightning Run, and both have great airtime. They have a pair of wooden coasters with Thunder Run and Kentucky Flyer, with Kentucky Flyer also being a family-friendly coaster, along with Roller Skater. Key 3 hangs under the track and serves as the multi-looper. They are missing a spinner, but their biggest gap is a launch coaster. Apparently, Ed Hart did not like launch coasters, so after they lost Grease Lightning, they never added a new one. Now that Hershen is in charge, they can finally fill that gap. And I think they can combine this with their need for more conventional inversions. I'm giving Kentucky Kingdom of a coma firestorm. There's a new one of these that opened in Vietnam called Wrath of Zeus with a 164 foot top hat and three inversions. If they need to make this a little shorter because of the airport nearby, maybe they could do that and add in some more inversions if they wanted. I don't know if Sansei would allow Vacoma to build a coaster like this in America, but because this is my fantasy video, I'm allowing it. What do you think about that, Sansei? Okay, do it again. Do it again. Ouch. Bow to your sensei! Now for Hershen's best park, in my opinion, which is correct. Silver Dollar City. They have a pair of standouts. Outlaw Run also giving the airtime and checking the wood box. Time Traveler with the spinning, as well as the inversions, which is also covered by Wildfire. Powder Cake has a powerful launch. And even though this park doesn't have a hyper, Powder Cake is pretty good at pretending it's a hyper. Grand Exposition Coaster. Thunderation, and Fire in the Hole all cater to families, and that leaves them with one gap. They have nothing off the track. So what would be the best thing to fill that gap? 
Invert, wing, flyer, maybe. Before a park like Silver Dollar City, think bigger. They got the first RMC Woody. They got the first Mock Extreme Spinner. And I want them to get the first SNS Axis. They can theme this, or not. I don't really care. But they can use the terrain to its advantage. Maybe feature a lift hill and a booster launch. The sky's the limit when it comes to Hershen and this park's budget. They always seem to get the big ticket rides. Moving on to SeaWorld. Let's start from the west and go to San Diego. This park didn't even have a real non-water coaster until 2012. And they've been on a tear since 2018. And they have a nice little collection now. When Emperor opens, it'll be their standout. I wouldn't call this or anything SeaWorld has as an airtime machine, but it will pack in three inversions. So it joins Tidal Twister as a ride that'll flip you upside down. Electric Eel and Manta have the launches. And Manta joins Journey to Atlantis for being family friendly. In addition to having no real airtime, they have no spinner, nothing under the track, and no wooden coaster. I think there's something to be said about Belmont Park's giant dipper being nearby. I know I blew off King's Dominion's concerns about a hyper being just an hour away, but this may lead SeaWorld elsewhere. Also keep in mind that the San Diego Park has a 30-foot height limit and need a waiver to go bigger, but it seems like they don't want to push it much past the 150-foot mark. For this park, I love the idea of a Chance Hyper GTX. I know it doesn't cover all the gaps, but when you only have five coasters, one coaster isn't going to cut it. A Vacoma Family Flyer and a Mara Spinner may be in their future, but I want to cover that airtime box. And with height being a problem, it's hard to think of a small-scale coaster that delivers airtime better than Lightning Run. Over to San Antonio, which seems to be a minor step up from San Diego. They have their airtime coaster with Steel Eel, their multi-looper and the coaster that hangs under the track with Great White, their launch coaster with Wavebreaker, and their wooden coaster with Texas Stingray. This can also be considered a standout. This or Steel Eel. Super Grover's Boxcar Derby and Wavebreaker are good for families. So the only thing they're really missing is a spinner. But if you look at two categories that were checked, they're pretty weak. That's the launch and the multi-looper. Wavebreaker's launch is kinda, eh. And it's good to have more than one looper in the park. I think they can solve both problems by getting a Vacoma Top Gun, or honestly, any launch looping coaster. But I was kind of hoping for something with a little more power to contrast Wavebreaker. And the Top Gun seems like a really good fit for a park like SeaWorld San Antonio. There's a bunch of these coming to China over the next few years, and it's not fair that they're hogging all of them. The traditional model has four inversions, a rollover camelback, sidewinder, and two corkscrews. And I don't know, I can just really envision this coaster here. Onto the last, and best, SeaWorld Park. The one that seems to get all the good coasters. Orlando. Mako is your standout coaster and your airtime machine. Kraken is a multi-looper. Manta is under the track. Icebreaker has the launch, and is also somewhat of a family coaster. Along with Super Grover's Boxcar Derby and Journey to Atlantis. No spinner, no wood. So unlike other parks, SeaWorld is right in the heart of theme park heaven. Four Disney parks, two Universal parks, Legoland, and two Fun Spot parks right there in the same city. I think their additions really do need to try to separate themselves from the rest of what Orlando has to offer. Otherwise, why come to SeaWorld? They're missing a wood, but would that be a great addition when the Fun Spot parks have some pretty good woodies right down the road? This was by far the toughest park to call in this video, or for that matter, any of these videos that I've done so far. Even though they just got Icebreaker as their first launch coaster, they could use a powerful launch on an extreme coaster. I think this could overshadow Icebreaker, so I don't think it's a perfect pick. But what if they combine a good launch with inversions and Orlando's first beyond vertical drop? I'm looking to Gerstlauer to build an infinity coaster, like Takabisha or Shellraiser. They can use more inversions in the park, and this bolsters their lineup pretty well. I thought about the mock extreme spinner, but I just don't see it here. Across Florida is possibly the best park in the chain, Busch Gardens Tampa. Iron Gwazi does so much for this lineup. It gives them an elite tier standout coaster and an airtime machine. Montu is under the track. Kumba is the multi-looper. Cobra's Curse does the spinning. Cheetah Hunt and Tigress have the launches. And for the families, you have Air Grover, Sand Serpent, and also Cobra's Curse. Their one gap? They just RMC their only wooden coaster. So the logical pick is to restock their lineup and get an awesome new GCI or Gravity Group. This is a great pick if they don't want to overshadow Iron Gwazi. Busch Gardens and RMC went all out with this thing, above and beyond anything they needed to do by doubling its height. And they may want to ride that wave for a while, but I think they could outshine Iron Gwazi by adding a B&M Giga. It would be the only one in Florida. It would offer some floater airtime to contrast Gwazi's ejector. And that's the main reason I chose B&M over Intamin. Just like Dollywood, they can have this thing sprawl all over the park. And when you add this into the mix with Iron Gwazi, Montu, Kumba, and Cheetah Hunt, that's one heck of a lineup. Last but not least is Busch Gardens Williamsburg, a park that I currently have ranked one spot higher than Tampa. But I'm sure a certain RMC will have something to say about that. But not to be outdone, 
Pantheon will definitely be great also. And I'm calling that the new standout coaster, as well as the launch coaster, aided by Verbolton and Tempesto. Apollo's chariot has the airtime, Alpengeist hangs under the track, Invader takes care of the wood, and Griffin joins Loch Ness Monster, Pantheon, and Alpengeist as multi-loopers. Grover's Alpine Express, Invader, and Verbolton provide a nice range of family coasters. The only thing they're missing is the spinner. So is this where I finally unleash the Mach Extreme spinner? After saying no to Dollywood and Busch Gardens Tampa, I'm gonna say no. I'm shutting that out of this whole video. Kings Island is the only one that gets one up to this point. I can really envision a flying coaster here. Whether it be a Vacoma launch flyer or a B&M flyer, I think Busch Gardens can give this a great setting and theme it like they know how to. I'm kind of getting vibes of Galactica over at Alton Towers. Just a little bigger. There's a lot of flyers in that part of the country. Six Flags Great Adventure, Six Flags America, Six Flags Over Georgia, Carowinds, but nothing super close to Busch Gardens. And if they got the launch Vacoma, it would be that much more different. Now that I've emptied Hershen and SeaWorld's bank accounts, I think I'm done here. Let me know what you think of my picks for these parks and what you would have taken if you disagree. When you're talking about how much Hershen and SeaWorld have been willing to spend, the ballpark of reality is a lot bigger than that of, say, Six Flags. So I was able to branch out a little here and not give every park a max force. And you thought that wasn't gonna come up in this video. Psh. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're new here and haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And check out the same videos I've done for the other chains. Also be sure to check out my Discord server. That's the best place to talk with other fans of the channel. And also be sure to check out my second channel. I made this one for other content creators to find some copyright free footage. All those links are down below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.